So a recap, and I do this every week, but I want to remind everybody, One Million Cups the, is part of an, it's an initiative from the Kauffman Foundation. Entrepreneurship.org, if you're a small business person, is a website you should visit once in a while. They have great resources and great articles, and it's just, it's, it's inspirational and educational at the same time. But the One Million Cups initiative is spread out across the country, and the purpose of it is to provide a platform or a place where entrepreneurs and startups can hone their presentation skills. That's the official educational based purpose of it. On top of that, then we're building a community to help you know, percolate the entrepreneurial community within Missoula and within each city. So we want to help connect the dots to resources, help, you know, it's like a rising tide lifts all ships. So this, we have two, presents, two presenters uh, every Wednesday morning, and I'm about to introduce our first presenter. The rules for the presentation are you've got six minutes to present. At six minutes, you'll hear the timer beep, and after that, we have 18 to 20 minutes of question and answer, and we hope to ask you questions that will help you refine your thinking about your business and what you're doing, help inspire you a little bit, and then you know, make you think. So I want to introduce our first presenter, and this is Patrick Collins. Patrick is, I don't know if you're the sole proprietor or if there's partners no. involved, but Patrick has Montainer. Yep. Montainer, come on over, Patrick, so you're in the camera shot. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Hey. Now, Montainer, I loved on your website, you've got the definition of Montainer. It looks like uh, the yeah. dictionary is like Montainer, pronounced Montainer. Yeah. The definition is, is a code-compliant dwelling made from recycled shipping containers. And the second definition is home. And I love that. So, <laughs> Thank Patrick, you. thanks very much. <laughs> yeah. Take it away. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, so I guess before I say anything about what Montainer is um, and what we're doing, uh, this is really cool to have here in Missoula. I know it's a small group, but we need more of this in Missoula. So bring a friend or someone that's interested in starting a business. We need a lot more of this <laughs> because it can be a lonely road here in Missoula starting a, a company. So um, there's just not a lot of people to really relate to. So uh, with you know your challenges and and how to move forward. And so um, this is great. <laughs> um, but uh, we started Montainer about two years ago. Uh, it started out just like a lot of the I ideas that people, uh, you know, pursue on the couch, you know, talking with, you know, a couple friends, looking at some pictures on the internet. And we kind of came to the conclusion that if, uh, do I just click through here? Is this, uh, oh, I'll just, uh, yeah, I'll just scroll. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll be on this side then because, yeah. Hmm. Let's see. Oh, yeah. So, oh, there we go. Yeah, there we're all set up. <laughs> yeah. So, so we, this is the prototype we ended up building about a year ago. But um, basically, we saw the idea for recycled shipping containers and how it's been done all throughout the world, but it's just clearly not a main thi a, a mainstream thing in the United States. And so we thought. You know, if no one's doing this on a large scale, then we want to be the company to do this. I, I didn't have any experience in building or modular manufacturing or architecture, but um, you know, over the next couple months after we came up with this idea, we just decided that we were going to pursue it. And if we didn't find like the silver bullet reason why um, this wasn't happening, um, then we we were going to be the company to do it. So, um, so here, uh, two years later, now we're manufacturing them and, and selling them uh, to customers all over the country. Um, this is actually, I was just in San Diego. This is a, a customer that placed an, over, uh, an order over our website for a backyard cottage in his, uh, in his uh, backyard in, in San Diego. And uh, it's gonna be turquoise just like his house. And uh, it's just a, it's a really cool thing that we can build these homes here in Montana and ship them out anywhere in the country. So. Um, this is, I'm, I'm just going to go through a couple uh, project photos and just to show you kind of what it, the product is. This is, uh, this is the floor plan for his project. It's just a, it's a, it's a complete house in, in one shipping container uh, in this model here. So it's got a kitchen there, a uh, bathroom uh, with a full shower, um, double French doors for a lot of open light and uh, open space. And this is a uh, this is half of a two container model we have in production right now. Uh, we're actually at, located at the mill site in Bonner, and we just have about 10,000 square feet of space there now, but a lot of room to expand. This is uh, 
another model that we have uh, for a client in northern Washington. And this is a, a, just a, a one container model again. Um, and I'm happy to tell you guys that we are actually delivering this model right now. It's getting set on the foundation right now. And so I'm driving out there as soon as we're done with this, <laughs> which is, it's really exciting to us because it was held up in permitting like so many times. And um, we're just finally, you know, it's coming. <laughs> this is just in Bonner, but we have a bunch of drone shots. We're documenting the whole process. And so in a couple more weeks, we'll be able to show you guys Hopefully, you know, we'll send out a, a link to the video so you guys can check it out and watch how the whole delivery process works. And this is actually the first house that we're physically delivering to a customer. Uh, we have pre-orders on like 26 at this point, um, but this is, this is the first one and we've got three that are in production. So that's it coming down the road. So yeah, I guess before I get into um, kind of uh, our sales stuff. So this is, this is what we're doing right now. The ultimate vision is that we want to make home ownership more attainable for anyone. Um, but right now, these are all customers that are buying these houses with cash. So it's kind of like a very small subset of the total housing market because 99% of people need some kind of loan financing to, to buy a home. So, um, so today we're just focused on making sure these first people that buy these houses are, are really, really excited about them. There, you know, we want to get really good client testimonials and make sure the process goes really smoothly for them. And then from there, we want to start providing loan financing and um, start to produce them on a much larger scale. So that's that's where we're at today. Um, yeah, uh, oh, is there like a timer thing that's going to go off? I guess I could show you guys. You still have a minute. Yeah. Oh, great. So, okay. So I'll show you where our sales are. Then I just put this at the end. Just so. It, it took us well over, uh, we have like a, a very big sale, you know, someone buys one of these houses for at least 65000 The average sale price we have right now is over 100000 So it's a big purchase for someone. <laughs> and so it took us a very long time to figure out how to actually sell these houses to people. Um, you know, people really were interested in the idea. We'd get hundreds of inquiries through our website, but actually getting someone to commit to buy one is a whole different story. So for the first year, uh, more than a year of our company, we, we didn't generate any revenue and it was just like, we still were trying to figure out how to do it. And so um, we set up a, a multi-stage sales process where it's, it's working, um, where someone actually places a small reservation deposit over our website. I mean, it's not small, it's like $2,500, but it's comparable to an architectural retainer. Um, so they place that initial deposit, we do a site evaluation, We put together the entire um, basically project proposal just like an architect does um, and we give them a complete cost to do the, the project and so the, you know if you have any questions this is these are this is this depicts our, our sales process and, and how our revenues have grown in the last eight months or so so yeah <laughs> but yeah this is good. Did anyone have any questions it's time for a question and answer okay show. cool So did you say the average um, price is sixty five thousand? Mm-hmm. Oh so no, no, sorry. The average price is actually much. Uh, it's about uh, the average price is about a hundred and some thousand, but the the base price is sixty five thousand. Okay, so given that, that you know the the challenge is those containers really are pretty small for what you could build using conventional building for that amount of money. What what do you think is the incentive? that makes people want to actually fork out this kind of money yeah, yeah, for a, a building like this. I mean, a, I've seen your, I've been in one of your buildings and I think they're really cool. Yeah, yeah. But that would be my question is, That's I could a build a question. stick frame thing that would be bigger for less. So what's the That's, incentive? That's a great question. And we get that question all the time. And the answer to that question is that um, in Montana, that's very true. Um, you could probably stick frame something much larger for less money. But in a place like Seattle or San Francisco, that's not the case, actually. Uh, the cost to construct in, in these really high cost of living areas is very, very high. Uh, in San Francisco, for example, it's like $600 a square foot to, to construct something there. So we actually have a very price competitive product in these places like San Diego, San Francisco, Seattle, where we can ship this, this module or this, this product out there 
uh, for much less than the cost of site build. And, uh, and, th and the, other, the other caveat to that, or the other, um, the, the other answer to your question is that for the base module, um, it's about 200 some square feet, um, that's a complete home in 200 square feet. So it's got every component of a home crammed into such a small space. So that's gonna elevate the cost per square foot. Uh, when you start adding more modules on for bedrooms and, and let more cost effective square footage, um, so you can add you know two bedroom modules onto that core module and triple the square footage and only increase the cost by another forty or fifty thousand dollars so the the incremental modules become much more cost effective as you build larger homes um, the The base module I showed you here that 's 200, like I said, 200 square feet. Um, but the average size of our homes that we're selling is more like 600 square feet, That's or, or larger. Um, we've just entered production on the first three right now. One's that red one you saw, one's a 600 square foot, two bedroom, two container model, and then we've got a three container, uh, two story model with a roof deck that um, is, is uh, it, there's a kind of an example on our website um, similar to that one, but, so that's a question we get all the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, who is your primary market and um, like, who are you targeting? Because I've heard some recent stories of um, maybe in the last year on um, national public radio about um, elder care and like keeping people on site at their home. And I was curious if you would looked into that at all, like, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, absolutely. Um, so our target market right now are they're what a lot of people call early adopters, the people that um, are fanatical about container homes. They're affluent people. They can buy with cash. Um, and so in this stage, if someone that's qualified to this, to this level is ready to do a project, then we kind of cater to their needs. So... The, uh, in the in the initial deposits that we've taken in from clients, we uh, kind of a lot of demographics are represented. Actually, there's the people that want to do a backyard cottage that you know they might want to put up family members or even rent it out on Airbnb um, or both. Uh, and then we've also got um, people that want to you know do a cabin on a piece of property that they own um, as like a second home. And then we've also got people that are kind of looking at the somewhat larger models to actually live in full time. All these people are represented in the people that have uh, placed pre-order deposits uh, through our website already. Um, but I guess the main target is they've got to be able to buy it. They have to have the money to actually buy it. Um, in the longer run, our target market is people that are renting, a, for example, renting an apartment. Um, but they could get into a Montainer for six, seven hundred bucks a month, and it's actually less than they're paying in rent, um, it, uh, for example. Or, like you said, people that want to add space to the, an existing home so they can put up their relatives. Um, and so the in, the in the early stages of a company, you've got to really focus on just the people that are ready to buy right now and really cater to their needs. So that's what we're doing. But in the long run, there, there's a huge market potential um, and on, on a lot of different verticals like, like you, you described. So we'll m kind of market to each of these um, home buying groups ultimately, but that's this, we're just focused very, very narrowly right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, so yeah, the, 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 this one, they're all on kind of different foundation systems right now. Or the foundations need to be designed specifically for the jurisdiction where they will be installed. This one is going on a slab. Um, that's actually not the best. Uh, so this is in California and they've got very stringent earthquake requirements there. Um, so this, it's like this highly over-engineered foundation that is going to be required for this project. But, um, for example, the red one here, this one is actually going on a, what, uh, what are called diamond piers, which are um, they're precast concrete piers that are hammer drilled into the ground uh, with rods. And um, it's actually 
a, it's a permanent foundation, but it, it can it has the ability to be temporary. You could actually take it out and then relocate it. So, and that's what this this client wanted to do in case they want to sell the property in ten years or something. They could actually relocate the unit somewhere else. So, um, that's actually the, our favorite foundation system to use, but it's not allowable in all areas. So that's part of that initial site evaluation that we provide for a client when they place their initial deposit. We do an evaluation on what it's going to take to install on their property, what kind of permits are going to be required, um, what kind of foundations necessary, and we make a, a, basically a determination on that and give them a, a cost for the entire unit installed on their property. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I had a question. You kind of answered it earlier, but I was curious if you guys. Um, we're like being able to produce a model that could be used as an ADU here in Missoula. Yep. And something that I guess it would have to be a little more affordable to kind of pencil out. Yep. Um, just I was kind of curious because I think it'd be great to be able to like pull one of these into my backyard and rent it out. Yep. But at the current price point, I don't think it quite works out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and and all of our our you know, all of our designs are there. We actually had to design to as far as building code compliance meet all building code compliance on a national level. So we we manufactured to basically the highest recognized building code in the United States, which is the IBC two thousand twelve. Um, so that's far beyond what's necessary here in Montana, but it's you know what's necessary in the city limits of Seattle, for example. So. Um, we had to kind of go above board on that. As far as zoning, it's just different everywhere. Our models will work in Missoula, uh, or we will configure a model that will work for a site. Um, sometimes there's like things like minimum square footage requirements, like you can't have less than 400 square feet, so you'd have to have two modules, things like that. But we evaluate those things to make sure that we're going to be able to do a project on on a given site. You know, if you if you had a site, um, but. Uh, to answer your question about the cost effectiveness, right now um, it's just a matter of the the market because in in Missoula this unit might rent out for four or five hundred bucks a month, maybe six hundred bucks a month, but in Seattle um, this would rent out for eleven or twelve hundred dollars a month for the exact same unit. So um, that's why we're focused. It, it our focus isn't as much on you know who's buying except for who can pay with cash. We've seen all sorts of different people that want to buy these. It's really just like who can uh, actually pay the, the <laughs> pay the full amount right now. But um, but really geographically is the biggest focus it, or, uh, as far as targeting. We, all of our AdWords, all of our marketing goes to Seattle, San Francisco, California. Um, and so um, our idea, it, and to kind of still answer your question like how can this help Missoula at least our idea is that we can employ a lot of people here in Missoula to house people in these places where housing super expensive and so that's kind of what our ultimate vision for Montana is we want to make it more cost effective but it's just it's going to take a while so yeah. um, where are you at in terms of sort of the, the financing option because we worked a little bit with shelter ah. designs here who do the yurts? Ah, yeah. We're addressing some similar issues. I'm just curious. Yeah, sort of yeah. What stage and what some of the barriers are to banks well, lending on this? Yeah. Kind of stuff. Um, so we we are, we are able to uh, have one of these homes financed. We actually have one client in particular that is getting financing for uh, their project, and this is a very large. I mean, this is like a six container, um, like almost two thousand square foot home, and they've already purchased the site. This is in Seattle. And they're getting what's called a construction to permanent loan. So they're they're getting a construction loan for the financing of the construction, and then once the home is complete, then an appraisal can be done, and then they can convert it in the same product into a fixed rate product. Um, and this is going to be a precedent for us. Like that's going to be huge. Um, and so once we have some comparables and some some kind of preliminary data on like a pilot project or two, then we're going to be able to really go to banks and say, would you be willing to set up a program to start financing these on a, on a real scale? Not just where it's an individual case by case basis, but where they're familiar with the product and then they can just qualify the customer um, and hopefully move forward. So we are making progress there. Um, with all of our initial projects that we're delivering, we are getting internal appraisals on them so that we can start to provide that data as well, even if they were paid for in cash. Um, 
and we're we're pretty uh, optimistic that they're gonna they're gonna turn out pretty uh, pretty favorably. So. Excuse me. You mentioned earlier you get a lot of inquiries, but the, you know the sales process is a little bit longer. And I yeah. imagine with the tiny house movement, a lot of people. These are, yeah. This is very fascinating. But can you walk us through that the sales process? Yeah, from, yeah. I'm interested to here's yes, you know 80k. Absolutely. You know that's probably that's super important because it's it's complicated and people don't. I mean we make it pretty simple, but um, it took us a very long time to figure this out, like years, <laughs> like or I mean like over over a year to really get to the point. And then still, we're still figuring out how it's working. But so this, these are our sales, and we, um, we classify them in three ways, uh, or there are three basically, uh, um, there's three things that we look at to quantify our sales and how we're doing. So um, this first line up here, these are um, the value of reservation deposits. So someone places uh, a $2,500 reservation deposit over our website and then we're able to put a value on their project. Like I was saying, the average value of a project is about 100,000 uh, right now. That's slowly going up actually um, as we bring in more projects. So this is what we call our pipeline. These are the, the people that have placed a reservation deposit. They're not committed yet, but we're evaluating their project. So these are basically our really, really hot leads. And so we look at that and um, we have a, a, a pipeline that's hopefully growing all the time and it has been growing very nicely. And then we have here the blue line, which is um, produc uh, production sales. So uh, when we give uh, uh, the client uh, the complete cost proposal where we say this is exactly how much your project will cost installed on your site, maybe a, a couple months after they place their reservation deposit, um, then if they decide to move forward and enter a contract with us, then they move into this category here. And um, so that's the total value of their project. But then they haven't paid us all the cash. They just pay an initial deposit. They pay like 40% to enter production. Um, and then once they do that, then we actually move through the entire uh, pro uh, project process and we continue to collect cash until the, the home's completed at various stages as we produce it. And that's, that's here. This is the actual cash collected on a project. So um, does that make sense? I mean, that's like, I guess that doesn't really explain how the client side of the process works, but that's how we look at our sales. And then I guess to answer your question more effectively, <laughs> um, from the client side, what happens is they go to our website, they have all the initial information they want to see there, like you know what kind of floor plans are available, how do we handle permitting, um, and uh, so then they probably contact us or give us a call on, uh, on our 800 number and we follow up with them and, and answer all of their questions. And when they're ready to take the first step, then they place that reservation deposit. Um, of all the people that contact us to how many people place the reservation deposit, it's less than one in 50. So like, I'm just filtering through like so many inquiries that are like, how do I build this myself? You know, <laughs> and like, or you know, whatever. Um, and then, you know, the one in 50 is like really serious about doing this. So, um, and then from there about one, and then that goes into this, uh, pipeline here and then about one and two will actually convert into a real project okay. yeah so half of them they place that initial deposit and then we find out hey you can't get the permits to do this unfortunately or it's gonna cost more than you expected or and we refund those reservations um, for up to one year so right. it's kind of like a no risk thing uh, for them in the first stage so That's yeah. Yeah. We have time for one more oh yeah yeah sorry guys um, yeah I'm just interested in how you met code and and some of the challenges that you found trying to meet that i'm guessing it's like four to six inches of insulation in the walls and yep. eight to ten inches in the ceiling so i'm just yeah. curious about some of the issues and challenges and how you guys solve those yeah we um well we god we'd still be trying to do that if we didn't have um we very early on formed uh, basically uh, an initial um, partnership with an architecture firm in Seattle that has done quite a few of these on a totally custom basis. 
And so we obtained those construction details pretty early on. Um, and they were probably the only firm in the entire United States that um, was, was doing custom but focused on, on ultimately making the product modular and replicatable. And so it was kind of a really good, it was a good coup for us. Um, we've evolved the products quite a lot since then, but we kind of started out with all of the engineered I mean, not started out. We, in the first six months, we obtained you know all the true, truly code compliant, engineered for IRC and I, IBC 2012, um, and then we were able to kind of piggyback off of that um, to expand our our ability to you know continue to make larger models and all of this stuff. But um, so we really, um, yeah, we had a really good. Uh, partnership there um, that helped us. Um, I don't think that there was any other firm that we could have contacted that could have provided us with the same stuff and they happen to be right in Seattle. So, um, And they're partners of our company now. And um, so that was huge. Um, you know, it's just, yeah, it was, it, it was a lot of work. I mean, looking back on it, now that we know all this stuff, it's like pretty simple actually. Like you just use spray foam insulation and you can't use two by fours, you can only use two by threes because the minimum width of a livable space is seven foot one and if you use two by fours you actually land at like six foot nine or six foot eleven for example. So all these little things that hang people up when they're trying to do this for the first time we just kind of shot past. So yeah. And meant yeah. <laughs> does that yeah, does that answer your question? Yeah. Cool. That's good. All right. So All right. our question yeah, yeah. is one million cups for you and for Montainer is what what can we do to help you? What can one million cups? What are resources or connections that you're looking for that maybe we could help connect the dots? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I really think that this is important stuff for Missoula. Um, if you know, every time I, I'll come, uh, you know, uh, next whenever I can make it again, and I'll bring someone. Just bring someone here. You know, like yeah. that, I think that's a. a and um, we need to get more people in the entrepreneurial mindset here. I think a lot of people like the idea of starting a business here, but um, it doesn't seem attainable to them or, you know, it's not like realistic. I've got a real job or something like that. So, I mean, I had to like just throw my life into this and I've, you know, <laughs> like, it's, it's been scary many, many, many times. So um, just bring more people into this culture because I think we need it here in Missoula. And yeah, yeah. That's great. Thank you, Patrick. Thanks yep. for yeah. taking time, especially. Yep. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll stick around for a little bit. This is great. Yeah.